Hey there, it's June 2022 and I'm here on International Drive in Orlando, Florida. And as you can see, this weird building behind me, believe it or not, today we're going to Ripley's Believe It or Not Orlando. Each Ripley's Believe It or Not location, and there are several throughout the country, is themed to the specific state that it's in. So here in Florida, we got a building that looks like it's falling into a sinkhole. All right, let's pop in. I'm here on a Monday intentionally hoping that it will be less crowded because any tourist attraction is more crowded on the weekends. So you can see we have Icon Park right over here. The swings are going. Now right in front of the building they have this plaque here telling the story. They make a whole theme story for each of the buildings and the story here is that as this was being constructed a sinkhole opened up in the ground and the building is just partially swallowed but it survived and it's here for us to enjoy, so let's go. I went ahead and purchased tickets online from home in advance, it was only $27. Very affordable in my opinion for this very fun attraction. Does anybody really know what time it is? Can time move backwards? These unique clocks are available in our gift shop and they make great gifts. Here we go, Ripley's Believe It or Not, awesome interactivities. Open from 10 a.m. to 12 a.m last entry at 11 p.m. so they're open really late all right let's go Ooh, it already looks different from last time I was here Wow so the front entrance has changed a lot since I was last here there are these booths where you can purchase your tickets and since I purchased mine in advance online I just scanned myself in there's a little gift shop we'll look at that as we're leaving welcome to weird Florida last time I was here was in March of 2019 and there are a couple of new exhibits that I'm really excited about one of them is weird Florida and it looks like that might be the first one we see I'm not sure let's in. Yeah, it looks like it's right in the front. So welcome to Weird Florida. I love, I love Florida and I love Weird Florida. Here we go. All right. Ooh, wow. Oh yeah, this is all new. Ripley feeding dolphins in 1940 in St. Augustine. Robert Ripley with a pelican at the alligator farm in St. Augustine, 1946. So we just get right into it, right into it. Can you roll your tongue? You're not gonna get me with this. This is, I don't know if I should tell you guys because it's kind of a spoiler, but there's a reason they ask you to roll your tongue here. When you do this, let's see. Yeah, I can. Before we move any further, I'll just give you a quick heads up in case you've never seen the Ripley's Believe It or Not TV show or never been to one of these auditoriums or don't know anything about it. Uh, there's a lot of weird stuff in here. The whole point is showing you weird, eccentric exhibits from all over the world that are supposed to be all authentic, but it's supposed to be odd. It's supposed to be kind of unbelievable, so Let's get into it. Just want to give you that heads up that there's going to be some weird stuff here. I do like that this first message is about, you know, stopping polluting and overfishing and protecting the oceans. I really like that. And so this first exhibit is Weird Florida, an ancient fossilized alligator. Wow. One of the finest and most complete fossil alligators ever discovered. This individual had slid into a limestone crevice on the bottom of a prehistoric lake and was quickly covered by the fine silt and clay and was preserved beautifully. Wow. Cypress stump, so cypress stump, cypress knees. We see those all over Florida. That is weird. A Siamese conjoined calf. We're gonna, we're gonna ignore that. Definitely a lot of weird animal stuff here. A German Wolpertinger. Uh, the Fiji mermaid. The public bought the deception completely and Barnum displayed it in his New York museum. So obviously that is not real. That is fakey, fake, fake. And that is they let us know when something is not real. Robert Ripley relished collecting and drawing cartoons for what he called pranks of nature. So like, yeah. Are these, I think there's like things you can open. It's very interactive here. Oh yeah. Arrow bottles. I do remember seeing the Shrunken Head collection last time I was here. And there used to be a little Shrunken Head makeover and I did it when I was here last, but it, it looks like it's out of order right now. All right, let's take a picture with this photo op. And there's a very weird uh, photo op here. So you can have someone stand right there, get your photo taken. And then, we will move along. Florida Voodoo. 
Voodoo, also spelled voodoo, is still practiced within Haitian communities in Southern Florida. However, modern Haitian voodoo is a religion based on healing and protecting. I wish there was a little more about this. There's a lot of weird stuff happening in here, you guys, but we're gonna go ahead and move on. Oh, so you can like, there's masks up here. And then if you look in here, so it looks like now we're in Ripley's Ancient Egypt. Camel bladder vase. No explanation, just a camel bladder vase. A cosmetic jar found in King Tut's tomb still held its fragrance after 3,314 years. Wow. Is this open? No, just a trick. Oh, creepy. Oh, that's so creepy. <laughs> There's a little dig play area where you can like brush the sand off of little artifacts. Ooh, scorpions. Hello, so we can just kind of dig some of them. Oh. oh, hello, Mr. Ripley. What's the matter? What's the pressing matter? Oh, the pennies. You can get some pressed pennies here. Hello, friend. This is a pressing matter. These pennies are unbelievable. <laughs> uh, this is a camel saddle used by Robert Ripley when he crossed North Africa by camel in 1933. I like how the walls are themed too. Very cool. All right. The American mummy. Oh, okay. So he's not here. Um, apparently there was a mummy in here, but he is not here. So instead we have some cow carved things like horns or something. Oh, that's a bummer. A happy canopic jar to hold internal organs during the mummification process. Okay, what do we have here? Who made this camel? Meet microsculptor Willard Wigan. There's a lot of these tiny things. I remember last time I was here, like you look through and like these microscopes and you see tiny, tiny paintings and art that could fit in the eye of a needle. So if you see it like in there, is that crazy or what? I don't know if I believe it or not, really. There's the needle in there. Like, is that for real? I don't know. All right, so no mummy. What else do we have here? Ooh. The jewel of Ra. Don't grab the jewel. Do you dare grab the jewel? Ah! You kind of have to stand on this to grab the jewel. All right. We know we can't grab the jewel, but we're gonna try to grab the jewel. Again. It's one of these type of things, see? It really looks like you can grab it. But you can't. Ah! Oh, and the floor is shaking and rumbling. I didn't even notice that happened the first time. <laughs> that's cool, that's fun. Here on this elevator is a little bit of a history of the auditoriums. So the first cartoon was published in 1918 and the first auditorium was at the Chicago World's Fair. Let's move on to the next exhibits, Ripley the Truth Seeker. So this looks like a uh, sideshow, the ethics of sideshow. This first panel here talking about the ethics of the sideshow seems to compare P.T. Barnum's approach with Robert Ripley's. Now P.T. Barnum was known as the greatest showman, but it's also known that he intentionally misled audiences and also made some of his performers very, very rich and famous. Now Robert Ripley's approach was very different. He was writing newspaper columns and showing off collections of items. His goal definitely was to shock and entertain and to make people question whether they believe it or not. His approach was more, look at this, look how out of the ordinary, remarkable, marvelous even. But yeah, also different and odd. And when something isn't real, he will tell you it's not real, but it's still got an interesting story to it. So clearly two very different approaches. The world of the circus has changed so much, but Ripley's Believe It or Not auditoriums still exist. Sword swallowers still exist. I see them all the time at Renaissance festivals and all sorts of performances. It's still an art that people perform. Oh, collapsible ones. Uh, Cause this was used to show how people would fake it. Oh, 
The menu is intensified. Oh, that's cool. Quite a skill, that's all I can say. Quite a skill. Props to the performers who choose to practice this, uh, this interesting art. Circus Tent Mallet. So this is about Barnum and Ripley. This is interesting. This is all new to me. I haven't seen this. The so history of the circus um, is very interesting and very fraught. This part of the exhibit features some of the very famous uh, sideshow and circus performers. We've probably all seen a lot of these in depictions, in movies, and popular culture. Strongman sculpture. The strongman uh, bends iron into statues. Oh wow. What's this? Interactive. Do we have to see how strong we are? Oh, that's hard. Oh, that is tough. Whew. Whew. That is not easy. Sensitive content? Sensitive content, parental discretion advised. I'm gonna look at it first and see if it's okay for you guys to see. Nope, that's sensitive content. Let's move along. And we are now in a section of so many oddities. Oh my goodness. Oh, okay. I see how this is all, again, new to me. So much has changed since last time I was here. So the items in here have a tag number on them. Matchstick Steamboat 171782. There it is, okay. Matchstick Steamboat Robert E. Lee 17310 Recycled Metal Hulk. So this larger than life sculpture was made by a team of artists in Thailand entirely from scrap metal. When the comic first deb debuted, his color was gray, but the printers didn't get a consistent shade, so he's changed the iconic green that we all know today. Crochidermy Gorilla? I don't even want to know. Let's see this. Howitzer Cannon 17524. It's an antique. Cannon. All right, so yeah, I mean, so far Ripley's look so different than last time I was here, and I appreciate what they tried to do with the e-museum aspect. I, I kind of like it, but I kind of also would just prefer like a tag next to each item telling me what it is rather than looking it up, because right now it's not crowded, but I can imagine when it is, there'd be a lot of people waiting and just having to go back and forth. Um, oh, there's another one too, so that's good. But I still would really just rather have a tag on each item telling me what they are. But let's move on to the next room because I know there's still a lot more. And my gosh, it's just like a completely different place than it was last time I was here. All right, Al Capone, Dicey Gambling. Looks like this is the uh, theme for the next room. The family owned dice originally belonged to Ralph Aiello. He ran illegal dice games at prominent Chicago country clubs in the 1940s. Al Capone asked him to work for him or stop his business and he did not listen and the front of his house was blown up and that ended the dice games and here are the dice this is an actual brick from chicago's saint valentine's day massacre wall so there's like gambling stuff i know it's a like the whole al capone thing is a very popular topic we've got a bank photo op in here and this guy, I feel like this guy was a different guy last time I was here. So for someone who is interested in like this kind of like gangster, gambling, Al Capone history, this would be a very interesting room. It looks like general like crime and stuff too. Alcatraz. Huh. So these are like little like the comic strips that Ripley started with. Oh, oh. Okay. So there's a like a like jail cell thing you can take pictures in, but look back here. <laughs> Remember when I came in and it said, Can you roll your tongue? That's <laughs> the mirror. <laughs> so people inside can see you doing that. Good trick. Oh yeah, and you can even see them here. <laughs> <laughs> Another little photo op here, and they have little things where you can pick your crime and take your pick. Ooh, what's this? English prison door. Weighing several hundred pounds, these doors were removed from Strangeways Prison in Northern England. Oh, scary. I think that we are now getting into the prison-y, torture-y, history stuff. They have like a little display. It's very 3D looking, crazy. Oh. Wow. All right, let's get out of here. On to the next. All right, so now we've got some like challenges and games. Seems like this would be a lot of fun for the kids. 
Dinosaur. The dinosaur Brontosaurus never existed. Scientists mistakenly put fossils from different dinosaurs together. We've got some dinosaur stuff. Wow. A mammoth tooth. When you can buy some bugs to eat. That's always fun. Oh, I remember this. Here's a little display about contortionists and a little bit of a test to see how good of a contortionist you are. Let's see if I can still fit. All right, so they've got a game of operation here. I remember this from last time. And I remember this thing is rigged, I feel like, because you can't get it, but I'm gonna try. I don't know. I wasn't here, so I don't know. Ah, cool. Ow. Okay. Oh, dang it. And in here. Ow. Oh. So if you touch the side. Ow says ouch, okay? Uh, but, it's really hard to get the stopwatch. Oh, there's a Ripley's coin in here. Yeah, it's really hard. Not easy. Stare at the dot in the center of the spinner for 30 seconds, then look at the tornado, whirlpool, worms, and space. Can your eyes survive? Okay, let's try. Are you staring with me? I'm not gonna make you guys stare for 30 seconds, but I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Okay. Wow. Oh, that is cool. It does make it look like the tornado is like moving, like spinning, like, like sinking Ow. in. Whoa, weird. Okay. And here we have some of the world's smallest miniature collection. I really like this. It's just so strange. This is the world's smallest violin. The neck holes are so small that a human hair can't fit in them. And then a miniature photo album. And then the world's smallest painting. And it's painted on the head of an ordinary pin. You need to really go up here to see it. Japanese scroll paintings. So there's like magnifying glasses on top to get a better look at them. One of the world's smallest fish hooks and business cards presented to King Paul and Queen Frederica of Greece. All right, all right, okay. George Washington portrait on a dime. This says, do not open this box. Human hair trousers. Oh. Ooh. Created by Bill Black, a barber from St. Louis. They're made from human hair. His effort at recycling. Very interesting. Okay. Now we've got another strange room. What do we have in here? So this is Lady Gaga, and that is up there. And it is a portrait of Lady Gaga using 61,206 small airsoft colored balls. This really weird looking painting of the Mad Hatter's Tea Party is made up of words and the words are the first four chapters of the Lewis Carroll book. So you can read it in there. That's the kind of stuff I like to see here. Very interesting. Uh, this is a replica of a peel car, the smallest roadworthy car ever manufactured. 54 inches long by 40 inches wide. It was handmade as an electric engine and only three wheels. That's neat. Tiny and giant 
Chippendale chairs. Many circus performers of the 19th century became quite wealthy. Billed as the world's tallest man and world's tiniest human. And up above is a depiction of the American flag and eagle made entirely of food. It's made of black beans, coffee beans, fava beans, kidney beans, rice, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, and corn kernels. Oh my gosh, those world's longest fingernails things. Have you ever seen those? They're all painted. Oof, this is them getting cut off. She finally got her record-breaking nails cut in 2021, actually, at the Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum in New York City. Modeled after Captain Jack Sparrow from Pirates of the Caribbean, created with seashell sea creatures, Florida beach debris, and alligator heads. Well, that's definitely the kind of weird stuff I like to see, too. Oh, look, there's even, like, little details in the... Look at the shell hand. That's probably the coolest part. Little cool details everywhere. And they've got this model here of the world's tallest man. Eighty-five hundred playing cards to create this Jimi Hendrix mosaic. It goes all the way up to the ceiling. It's huge. This whole section seems more like fun pop culture stuff, which I really like. And it's kind of like up ahead. It looks like there's a little bit of a wax museum, which is really interesting. And I like that it pays tribute to the people that were involved in the circus and the, you know, the troubled history of that, while still giving that celebrity status and honor to those performers who put a lot of work into what they did and made careers out of it. I can't tell who's like people and who's the wax figures. I really like that shirt. I would definitely get that shirt. but you can also go through a tunnel bypass if you do not want to go through the dizzy tunnel. But you know we're gonna go through the dizzy tunnel, so let's go. hallway and here is the exit so let's look to the gift shop have some fun feels good to like see again and not be falling over lots and lots of t-shirts really cute designs actually some I like that one weird vibes only <laughs> bizarre wars tie-dye I'm telling you guys when we did our road trip in March and April we went like to a ton of different states like seven states or something like that we saw tie-dye everywhere at parks all over the country carowinds bush gardens williamsburg everywhere we went we saw tie-dye shirts and clearly i was into it you can get some snacks too that's good and some beverages Ooh, cherry vanilla i haven't seen that for a long time even weird sodas what's this one <laughs> cherry studio pass Ooh. Interesting. All right, what shirt are we gonna get? Ooh, I like this one. Ripley's Believe It or Not Auditorium. Yeah, that's the one, I think. I like it. Cryptozoology tracking team. I like that too, that's cool. All right, that's that one up there. I'm tempted by the weird vibes only, but I don't like that face in there, so no. <laughs> I do like the Orlando Mermaid shirt though. There's a lot of like jewelry and trinkets and cups and like even pewter dragons and skulls, mugs. Oh, fun little yummy candy fact. Oh, the Rip Ripley's Candy Factory. I'll have to look into what that is. I love these circus peanuts. Who else loves those? 
what else we got here? I love anything like this, like these gummies covered in the sugar, they taste so good. What else? Oh yeah, a lot of fun stuff. There's also books, so you can read up more about believe it or not type of wild wacky stuff. All right, time to head out. All right, I hopped in the car because it got too hot and too loud out there. I hope you had fun today with me doing something a little bit different, checking out Ripley's Believe It or Not. I hadn't been there since before the pandemic, so I wanted to see what it was like and what has changed. And it's changed a lot. Um, I kind of miss some of the way things were like all the like medieval dungeon type of stuff was a much cooler hallway before and now it's like a weird little section when i visited in 2019 there was this room that was like an optical illusion everything looked like it was slanted one way but it would roll the other way it was one of my favorite parts and that room was just totally gone now and i really miss that i like that kind of thing like a room that you walk in and everything's all Topsy-turvy. A lot of places have had to change and adapt and things have changed a lot everywhere at all tourist attractions, even the big world-class ones, Disney World, Universal, a lot of things have changed, some for the better and some for not. So I still think Ripley's is a lot of fun. So if you visit now and you visit like a year from now, it's probably gonna be different. It's just something really interesting to do. You can get uh, discount tickets sometimes online, but even the regular price ticket I think is really reasonable for an afternoon full of fun. You could spend two or three hours in there or you could spend more if you really like take your time with the exhibits and play with everything. Yeah, I just think it's really interesting and really different. I'd like to visit more of the Ripley's Believe It or Not locations around the country and compare them and see how they are. And if you want to compare what the Orlando Ripley's used to be like, I'm going to leave that in the pinned comment. So I hope you have a great rest of your day or evening wherever you are. I'm sending you a ton of love and I'll see you for the next video. And until then, as always, stay enthused. Bye.